My wife and I are back from Calgary. That's where we were. And, you know, we heard, you know what happened in Calgary in June, right? The Great Flood. I heard a few flood stories when I was out there. And uh, I just want to share one of them with you. My favorite story was about a flood that hit one of the real upper class neighborhoods in Calgary near the Bow River. This one guy there had a very expensive wine collection. In fact, he had this wine collection insured for 4.1 big ones, million. That's a lot of wine. That's some real expensive wine. But after the flood, he went downstairs to check on his wine collection, and there it was doing the backstroke. $4.1 $4.1 million of wine floating in the Bow River. And worst of all, all the labels washed off. You could not tell a $20 bottle of wine from a $20,000 bottle of wine. They all looked exactly the same. And you know, when I heard that story, man, that thing just captured my attention. And I want to say to all of you this morning, You and you and you and you and everybody else, Uncle Ernie and Helen, you too, I want to say welcome to Home Church Langley because this is the kind of church where all the labels are washed off. We're all just equal before God and before His Son, Jesus Christ. There's no rich or poor. There's no management or union. There's no Canadians and immigrants. There's no employed and unemployed. There's no high class and trailer trash. There ain't nobody here but us Christians. Can I get an amen? It's true. So my name is Pastor Jim, and I'm a bottle of wine. And so are you. So I want you to introduce yourself to somebody right next to you, maybe who you don't know. Shake your hand, say what your name is, and introduce yourself as a bottle of wine. All right. Next thing I just want to share with you a second is I did some summer reading. I did a little bit of reading this summer. This is real important, so thank you, Paul, Steve, good. Frank, that's good, bud. Well job, good job. I did some summer reading. I'm I'm reading this book that was just written last year by a brain surgeon. Written by a brain surgeon. This guy's been a brain surgeon for 25 years. And he had a near-death experience, an NDE, as the acronym goes. This near-death experience for this brain surgeon lasted for one week as E. coli attacked his brain and pushed him down into a deep, deep coma for seven days. Before the coma, as most scientists and brain surgeons are, he was an avowed empirical rationalist. That means he believed that if you couldn't see it, if you couldn't touch it, if you couldn't measure it, that meant it wasn't real. But that was what he believed before his seven-day coma. After his seven-day coma, when his brain was shut down for that week, he changed his tune completely. First of all, in his near-death experience, he entered this really dark and creepy place. And as it got darker and as it got creepier, he cried out to God. And you know, that emergency staff room where he was having these violent convulsions, the whole staff room, emergency room staff, heard him scream out, pop up on his gurney and yell, God, help me! And down he went again. And then God gave him another chance. And he was led up by uh, this light being out of this dark, creepy, murky place. And he was led up, 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 higher and higher to this place full of what he calls spinning melodies. Apparently, he said, the music is just unbelievable. There are rays of light, he said, darting across the sky making the most joyful noise, every one of them. It's like they couldn't help but make this joyful noise as they whipped across the sky. And these were angels, he believed. He, he came to a place of beautiful lights, uh, fields, forests, people dancing, laughing. And most of all, he said, the main thing that he said, if I boiled it all down, he said there was this pers- pervasive 
uh, experience of love, love, love. He said, like I've never felt before, and it shot through my entire being. Now, why am I telling you about my summertime reading? I'm telling you this because it has the bottom line. The bottom line is in life you can buy the wrong car, you can marry the wrong girl, you can get trained for the wrong job that's now obsolete, you can move to the wrong city, but there is one decision you have absolutely got to get right, and that is the decision to open up your heart and determine that I am going to get to know God. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because my friends, everything else in life is secondary. Agreed? Oh, man. And that's why I'm standing here today, and I want to invite you to my new Christians class. We're going to highlight one small group every week, and this week I'm highlighting my new Christians class. It starts in a couple of weeks. If you're a new Christian, or if you are a seeker, or if you are an agnostic, someone who's not sure if there's a God, someone who I would like to call a pre-Christian, I want to urge you to make every effort and make your calling and election sure. That's a biblical phrase, to make your calling and your election sure. Um, we're going to spend about four months together, maybe even a little bit more than that. Every week, we're going to get together one evening, and uh, I want you to be part of that group. And if that is of interest to you, and you say, you know what, I think you're spot on pastor because I don't want to get to the end of my life and pass away and find out I never made the most important decision well I did make the decision but I made the wrong one 